before we start, I would like you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Trendy Spotlight. 8. Glenn Close Hook Cameo Glenn Close has an extensive decades-long resume and Hook is a surprising blink and you'll miss it role. With a wide array of acting credits including such titles as Fatal Attraction and 101 Dalmatians, Close is completely unrecognizable as a member of Captain Hook's pirate crew. Costumed as a bearded and dirty man named Gutless, Close's pirate cameo can be found when Hook accuses her character of betting against him, luring Peter back to Neverland. 7. The Hook was reversed for Dustin Hoffman. Captain Hook has his hook affixed to his left hand because Dustin Hoffman is right-handed. However, in Peter Pan the play in the novel Peter and Wendy, Captain Hook is missing his right hand and often uses his hook as a weapon. Though Disney's Peter Pan adaptation also features Captain Hook missing his left hand, Hook swapped the hook to make sword fighting easier for Hoffman. Hoffman's Captain Hook also has several different attachments for his missing hand. During the baseball scene, Hook has a baseball mitt attached to his missing limb. Other attachments include a goblet for drinking and a pointer. 6. Hook is Spielberg's first Rad Scene nomination. Julia Roberts' performance as Tinkerbell earned her a Golden Raspberry nomination for Worst Supporting Actress, marking the first time a role in a Spielberg film had received a Razzie nomination. However, Hook was nominated for five categories at the 64th Academy Awards, including Best Art Direction, Best Costume Design, Best Visual Effects, Best Makeup, and Best Original. Hoffman was even nominated for the Golden Globe Award for Best Actor in a Motion Picture, Musical, or Comedy, however. Roberts had a less than stellar performance as a little fairy spreading pixie dust. Carrie Fisher was the prototype for Tinkerbell and even helped polish some of Tinkerbell's dialogue, but Roberts could not carry the character. 5. Hook was originally a musical. Spielberg originally envisioned Hook as a musical but removed all the songs shortly before production. Composer John Williams wrote a number of songs alongside lyricist Leslie Burkus, which were even rehearsed before Spielberg pulled the plug. Several instrumental versions of the songs still appear on Hook's soundtrack. Hook would be a very different movie if it were a musical. While Robin Williams and Hoffman have the personalities to pull off musical numbers, song and dance would change to the movie's rhythm and interrupt more serious storylines, such as Peter's son wanting to remain with Hook because Peter breaks promises. So removing the musical numbers was the best thing to happen to Hook. 4. Dottie Fate has an executive producer credit on Hook. Dottie Fate, a film producer and a romantic partner of Princess Diana when the duo was killed in a car crash in 1997, is an executive producer for Hook. As the son of billionaire Mohammed Al Fayed, Fayed worked for his family's production company Allied Stars. Through Allied Stars, Fayed served as executive producer on only a few movies, including Breaking Glass, FX, and FX2. Fayed also produced Chariots of Fire, which was nominated for seven Academy Awards in The Scarlet Letter, starring Demi Moore. Fayed owned certain rights to make a Peter Pan film and sold his rights to Hook's production company, TriStar Pictures, in exchange for an executive producer credit. 3. The mysterious floating couple is well known. George Lucas and Carrie Fisher cameo in Hook as a kissing couple on the bridge. When Tinkerbell is flying an adult Peter back to Neverland, Pixie Dust falls onto the duo on the bridge, which also causes them to float. Fisher has additional connections to Hook as she helped with Tinkerbell's dialogue and some script doctoring. Lucas was given a cameo as a friend of Spielberg with connections to Fisher after Star Wars. Lucas and Fisher reuniting for a random cameo in Hook is an often overlooked moment. Number 2. Bob Hoskins reprised his role for the Neverland series. As Captain Hook's right-hand man, Bob Hoskins reprised his role of Mr. Smee for Sci-Fi's Neverland. The fantasy main series Neverland served as a prequel to the story of Peter Pan and depicted Hook and Peter's falling out. 
a young Jimmy Hook and his delinquent friends are transported to Neverland with an orb, leaving Peter behind. In Neverland, Mr. Smee worked for Captain Bonnie until her death, when Captain Hook took over the ship. Considering the time between roles, Hoskins fits right back into the crew as me. Reprising his role of Mr. Smee from Neverland is one of Hoskins' final performances before he died in 2014. 1. Maggie Smith was 56 in Hook, but her character was much, much older, best known for her role as Professor McGonagall in Harry Potter. Smith looks incredibly younger than in Hook 10 years prior. If Maggie Smith's appearance in Hook as the elder Granny Wendy is shocking, it's because she was aged significantly. Though Smith was only 56 years old then, Granny Wendy was in her 90s. Appearing frail as she tries to convince Peter of his past, Smith's transformation into Granny Wendy is truly shocking but believable. With plenty of makeup and her soft demeanor, Smith manages to play the part perfectly. At 88 years old, Smith still hasn't reached the age of Granny Wendy in Hook. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.